Hello everybody, Brody here. I can remember the day that I clicked the create new channel button on YouTube and six months, 145 or so subscribers, and a hundred videos later, here we are. This is a huge commentary to celebrate my hundredth video and you guys sent in your questions and topics for me to talk about. I will do your questions and topics first and then get into some other things. So grab some homework or whatever and play this in the background and relax. Or you could just watch the relay of all of my events that I'm doing right now. You may notice that some of the questions on my video won't be answered in the question section, and that's because they all group together to make one topic, and that topic is how I started cubing. Now let's get the questions flowing. And just before we start, every once in a while you'll hear me take a drink from a water bottle just to keep my voice going, and you'll hear me fumbling with some papers, and that's my script. First, California Cuber has a few questions. First, are you planning on making more live streams? The answer is yes, I would love to, but... And I would like to do some live stream competitions like I did with my most recent one. But I have very little time to put aside for planning that, time, that kind of thing and actually doing it. Second, what's your favorite cube store? Whichever one offers to give me stuff first, which is most likely going to be cancube.org, but I don't know for sure. Next, bbrocuber asks, what is your favorite non-WCA puzzle and how hard was it to solve? I don't have a ton of non-WCA puzzles, but my favorite is the Mefferts Gear Ball that my little brother got me for my birthday, and that's pretty easy. Cubestar asks, who are your favorite, who are your top five favorite cubing YouTubers and your top five non-cubing YouTubers? In no particular order, my top five cubing channels are Brody the Cuber, Crazy Bad Cuber, Sire the King, JR Cuber, and Cubix. Also in no particular order are my top five non-cubing channels, Vsauce, PewDiePie, The Game Theorist, Ray William Johnson, and ERB. Would you rather own MoYu or be the fastest cuber in in the world? I would be the fastest. I would sorry. I would be the fastest speed cuber because I don't cube to get money. Yet. I wouldn't complain if someone gave me money for cubing, but cubing is more than income to me. It's how I have fun. It's how I spend my free time, and it's what I look forward to every day. Cube star or cubologist? Cubologist is cool and all, but he wasn't the one that made me a new channel banner. Camo Cubes asked two questions: Way long or how long? How long v2 all the way? Next, what is nine plus ten? Nine plus ten is your IQ. If you need to ask me the answer to that simple of a math problem. Orange Cuber asked a bunch of questions as usual. How long did it take you to get sub-20? About three months. What's your favorite cube? Mo Yu Tang Long. Do you have any pets? I have two dogs and two cats, and the cats are in my videos every once in a while. What are your cubing goals? To get the world record in every event. Will you do a collection and mains video? I did a mains video, and I will before each comp, and I'll do a collection video on New Year's Eve. What is your favorite color? Red. Who is your favorite cuber? Brody Lastner. What is your dominant hand? Left. What is your OH hand? Left. What do you average on OH? 26 to 34 seconds. What is your favorite event? Tie of 2x2 two two through 5x5. Five five. Can you blind solve? No, but I'm trying to learn. What's your favorite 3x3? Three three? Mo Yu Tang Long. How long have you been cubing for? That will be answered later. What are you what are your YouTube goals? To have more subs than PewDiePie. What do you average on all WCA events? I don't do all WCA events. What is your main for every event? I don't do every event. When did you start cubing? This is the same as the question a few questions ago. What was your biggest cubing fail? DNFing on 2x2 when Kit Clement was my judge. I'll probably tell the story later. What do you average on 2x2 two two through 7x7? Seven seven? On 2x2 two two, I average about 3.6, on 3x3 three three, a low 14, 
4 by 4 I average a low minute, 5 by 5 about 235, 6 by 6 about 5 minutes, and 7 by 7 about 9 minutes. Are you color neutral? Only on 2x2, Pyraminx, and Skube. Who is your favorite YouTuber? Brody the Cuber. How long will you continue this series? This isn't a series. Can you do a comparison video of the Moyu and Shangxiao 6x6s? Yeah, but there really isn't a comparison. What puzzle would you want to be mass produced? I don't really care as long as Moyu makes it so it's good quality. What's your favorite non-WCA puzzle? The Gear Ball. Do you do, ma do you do magic? No. How did you get into cubing? I'll say later. If you got to hold the world record in any event, which one would it be? All of them. Do you like school? School is meh. It takes a lot of time. Do you like cuboids? Yeah, I've got almost the whole 3x3xn collection. And I'm probably going to complete that and then get a few more cuboids. What was your most exciting cubing moment? My first sub 10 3x3 single, my 8.94, which I got on a video call. If you got to spend a day with anyone, who would it be? No one, I would live stream all day. What does your family think of your hobby? My parents say that they are impressed, but I know that they just think that cubing is what keeps me in my room all day. What's your favorite shape mod? The Petaminx Ball. Have you ever done a mod before? Nope. How much time a day do you spend solving? I actually did the math here. 24 hours a day, minus 8 hours at school, minus 1 hour on the bus to and from school, minus 1 hour of homework, and 8 hours of sleep, and 1 hour of dinner, equals approximately 7 hours a day. What is your competition PB? 14.48 uh, 3x3 three three single. If you had to give up Q uh, YouTube or cubing, which would you choose? I would give up life. What is your favorite school class? Uh, Spanish. What's your favorite food? Pepperoni pizza with extra bacon. What's your favorite pe pizza topping? Pepperoni. What's the worst puzzle you own? R a Rubik's 5x5. Five five. Would you consider opening a fan Skype? Maybe, but Skype actually doesn't work well on my main laptop. What is your favorite breakfast food? Uh, it's kind of a tie between scrambled eggs and waffles. What's your favorite holiday? All of winter break. How much money would you say your collection is worth? As much as my life. Will you answer all of these? You will never know. What is your biggest cubing achievement? Learning to solve a 3x3 in the first place. What is your favorite video game? Super Mario Galaxy 2. Have you ever considered opening a gaming channel? Not really. If I had two channels, I would end up ignoring one of them eventually, and I don't want that to happen. How many puzzles do you have? About 35. What is your favorite food? I already said. How do you balance school and cubing? By basically doing nothing else. Moyu or Shengxiao? Mo Yu, Yao or Reduction, Yao, would you ever consider modding? Probably not. Do you ever see yourself quitting cubing? No. How many PLLs do you know? 21. Are you a YouTube partner? No, my dad won't let me. Do you play many sports? I pretty much only play baseball and cubing does not yet count as a sport. Can I get a shout out? Nope. Do you like waffles or pancakes? I like both. Do you watch or make vines? No, because I believe that vines bring out the stupid people. What is your favorite PLL? The PLL skip. How many languages do you speak? I speak kind of two because I'm learning Spanish, but I speak one fluently. What is your favorite color? Red. How many questions do you need? Enough. Who is better, Felix or Matt's? Felix, what was your first speed cube? The stickless Zanchi. What is your favorite music type? The musical kind. What is your favorite cookie? 
The one with the largest radius. Where is the farthest out of state you've been? Uh, one time I was in Europe and Asia. That was uh, last summer. Have you ever been to Disney World? No. How much do you spend on cubes a month? About 40 45 dollars. What's the most you've ever spent on one package? About 90 dollars. How do you pay for all of your cubes? I mow the lawn and then my dad pays me. What's your favorite cube company? I'll give you a hint. It starts with M. It ends with a U. And you make my main 3x3. Three three. How many hours do you think you've spent cubing? All of them. What methods do you use for 2x2 two two through 7x7? Seven seven? I use CLL, CFOP, Yao, then reduction, reduction, reduction. Do you, do you cube in school? I wish I could, but I don't really. Do your friends cube? A few of them do. Do you know many YouTubers? I don't know very many in person, but I do know the cubing mate, Kinlan Peng, and Automatic Cuber, but none of them really have active channels anymore. Do you film all of your solves? Not even close. Do you watch a lot of TV? No. Where do you see the limit for 3x3 singles? It depends on what my 3x3 PB single is in about 5 years. What do you think the highest cute order cube will be? N plus 1 by N plus 1 by N plus 1 when N is the highest order cube that's already been made. If you got to get one cube, price having no effect, what would it be? All of them. Do you play any instruments? I play piano. What's... Mm, never mind. Do you see the cubing community growing or shrinking? I see it growing because it's getting there are more and more puzzles and people are just getting faster and faster. Will you be going to Nats 2015? Nope, it already happened. How many competitions have you been to? As of the time I'm recording this, two, but I'll go to I'm going to one in less than a week. What will you do for 1,000 subscribers? I'll throw a party. How many questions did you expect to get? N plus 1 when N is the number I've already gotten. What is your greatest cubing achievement? Learning to solve. What is your greatest life achievement? Living. Do you have any siblings? I'm a middle child out of three children. Do you like beaches or public pools better? I'm not a ton of a swimming person, but I prefer beaches. Do you like answering 100 questions? It's pretty cool knowing that people care enough to ask a bunch of questions. Now that's the end of Orange Cuber's questions. Now here is a bunch of questions from the Obsessed Cuber. Do you like eggs? Yes. Who is your favorite you cuber? Brody the Cuber. Crazy Bad Cuber or Red KB? Crazy Bad Cuber. Who is more nub? Derpy Cuber or Hashtag Cuber? Hashtag Cuber. Who is your cubing inspiration? This one is actually kind of strange because the people that inspired me to learn to solve quickly aren't famous. They're people who could solve in 30 seconds at my school when I was still a two minute solver. Their names are Nathan Dayak and Daniel Song and you've probably never heard of either of them unless you know me personally. How many comps did you go to? Two. What next comp are you going to? K-Cubing 2015. What is your Pyramix main? Moyu. Are you vegetarian? No. What is your favorite candy? Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Is your mom better than you in 3x3? Three three? My mom can't solve a 3x3. Three three. She can't even name a single speed 3x3. Three three. If you were a girl, what would your name be? I have no idea and I'm not going to answer that one. Sheng Shao or Diane? Sheng Shao. Diane Zanchi or Gu Hong? the Diane Zanchi. How many TVs do you own? I don't personally own any, but there are three in my house. What camera do you use? I use my iPod and a GoPro Hero 3 Plus. Have you ever been to New York? Yeah, I was in New York City for a day or two, but that was just for a connection flight to Europe. What is your clock main? The Bai Tai. Tacos or KFC? Tacos. Fruits or vegetables? Fruits. Do you play any instruments? I play piano. Do you play sports? I play baseball. Now in turn, 
in return for answering a bunch of your questions, I want you to answer a few of mine. First thing, if you comment the number 125 to prove that you got to this point in the video, I will give you a shout out in a later video. Second, do you think that this video is too long? Because this could affect whether or not I make more long commentaries. And then the final question is, would you watch more videos in the same style as the Easy CLLs trailer video? Because I would totally make more if people would watch them. Now I'm going to tell a few stories. First, I'm going to tell the story of how I started cubing and how I started speed cubing. So the story of how I started cubing goes back to when I was when I was in second grade, which was the winter of 2009. When I was on YouTube as I already was then and I found a video that was on the front page of a guy who got what was then a Rubik's Cube world record of seven point something which I think they later found out was fake and then my dad saw me watching that video and he said do you want to go to the store and get one so later that night um, we went to the store and we got two Rubik's Cubes one for me one for my sister I scrambled it and it just frustrated me. I knew I was smart enough to do this, but I just couldn't. So I I actually got so frustrated at one point that I tried to take it apart. I actually wedged a butter knife under one of the edge pieces and used the leverage to pop it out. And then I couldn't back, put it back together. So I had to get my dad to put it back together. Still scrambled, but one of the edges was put in flipped which I didn't realize until a lot later so then both of the Rubik's cubes were basically lost but then in the summer in between in the summer in between second and third grade which is a few months later I found one of them and it ended up and it turned out to be the one that had the edge flipped and I said I know I'm smart I'm going to prove it I'm going to learn to solve this so I watched Dan Brown's tutorial, but I got stuck on the last layer when you needed to get the cross because I, the F sexy F prime thing wasn't working because the edge was flipped. And I didn't realize that until I got was essentially a PLL skip and then it was all solved except for the flipped edge and then I realized there's no way that you could solve it from here. So then I started searching a lot for that other cube and about a month later I found it and I tried it and I was really surprised that it finally worked. I was wondering why it didn't at first and now it finally worked. So then I went through the last few steps of the video and I watched it and I f solved my first Rubik's Cube in summer of 2010. So then, I was basically still a two minute solver, two and a half minute solver, and it stayed that way until January, January 12th, 2015, when I was walking home from school and I was carrying a bunch of stuff, including that Rubik's brand that I'd still had for many years. I ended up dropping it and it broke and I don't mean like just all the pieces fell out the core snapped and I was kinda devastated but I showed my parents they and I finally decided it's time for an upgrade so I did a little bit of research and I decided to get a stickless Diane Zanchi because at that point I wasn't planning on entering any competitions and at that point stickless cubes still weren't allowed so I got that and is and I decided it would kind of be almost misusing this puzzle if I'm still using the beginners method and when I started you when I got the Zanchi finger tricks just naturally came to me and then my times dropped to about 55 
And then I learned F2L, and I practiced for hours and hours every day until I got my first sub-20 time ever sometime around early March. And, no, probably not early March, like late March. And I was really excited, and I wanted to start going to competitions. And luckily then, there was a competition that was like 10 miles north of my house, and it was on April 18th. So I ordered a Moyu Aolong version 2, which I still have to this day, and I practiced and practiced for the competition, and I got a 21.89 average, and then two days, I, no, not two days, five days after that competition, I started this channel. So that's the story of how I started cubing. So I'll do one more story, and that's how I DNF'd on 2x2 with Kit Clement as my judge. And this was a few months later. This was in June 2015 at the Indiana 2015 competition. And some of my, some of my fans that have been fans from the beginning remember the videos where I was practicing for Indiana 2015 with some 2x2 averages and pyraminx and skew and stuff. And then I posted some of my, some of my averages from that competition. And the 2x2 average I posted was actually my worst out of the two 2x2 two two averages at that competition because I didn't want to show the DNF. What happened was I went to inspection time, I sat down and I vaguely recognized the judge and then later that day I realized it was Kit Clement. And for those of you who don't know who Kit Clement is, he's the guy that writes the WCA regulations. So then, what happened was, I put my hands down on the timer, but the little green light that's supposed to come on wasn't coming on, so I went, I lift my hands up really quickly and then slam them back down without even touching the cube, and it was like .1 something, and the timer actually did go, the light just didn't go on, and it was really embarrassing, especially in front of Kit Clement. I may or may not, at a later date, post the footage. But I'll tell you what. If this video gets 100, and yes, I said 100 likes, I will do two things. I will post the video of me DNFing on 2x2 in front of Kit Clement, and I will do a giveaway. So... Thanks for watching, like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, thank you so much for watching my 100th video, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you to Mastercuber for making that new intro for me, and thank you to all of you guys for watching this video to the very end. Don't be afraid to click those links that are in the outro, they'll either subscribe to my channel or lead back to my channel page. See ya!